Hi, I'm Tim May, and I'm moderating this series of 10 conversations on expressive photography with Phil Douglas. Phil understands the nature of expressive photography as well as anyone I know. For 35 years, he directed the Douglas Visual Workshops, and he helped more than 10,000 communications professionals make and use photographs to express ideas, tell stories, and convey meaning. Phil says he's learned a great deal from these, those workshop participants over the years, and he en also enjoys learning from the tens of thousands of images he's made in more than 60 countries. I first met Phil uh, at Santa Fe Workshops in 2004, and we went on to photograph together across North America, as well as in Europe, Asia, Africa, and South America. Both Phil and I have displayed our images on various photographic websites, and Phil has put together a 5,000 image cyber book on expressive photography at pbase.com. You can find the link to that cyber book in the notes below. It has drawn more than 10 million visitors since he started in 2003. They have left more than 12,000 comments under his pictures, and Phil has answered each one of them. When the pandemic brought Zoom into our lives, I asked Phil to bring that cyber book to life in this set of 10 conversations on expressive photography. And now he has. Enjoy. So today, when color tells a story, okie dokie. Okie dokie indeed. Many years ago, back in 1839, when <laughs> photography was invented, there was no such thing as color. And for years and years and years, black and white was the accepted medium. And, and then came attempts at color, very complicated attempts at color and expensive, and it gradually resolved itself in the 1930s with the invention of Kodachrome, and then they began using color slides, and then color prints came available, and, it, and color pretty much took over. Black and white is now a niche. It's a niche for basically art photographers, photojournalists, and I use both, and I've used both for many years. And I don't use both because one is better than the other. I use both because I express ideas in black and white best when the idea calls for black and white. And I express my ideas best in color when the ideas call for color. That is my rule of thumb. That's how I work. I know photographers who will shoot nothing but black and white as a matter of principle. And I know people who will shoot color because they look at black and white as an archaic medium. And so I use both. And digital makes it very easy to do. I shoot everything in color and then simply, when I'm in my post-processing mode, turn it to black and white. I'm not going to talk about black and white in this medium because all my examples are color. I talked about them, I'm sorry, I said in this medium, I meant in this module. Right. Uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, talk about black and white at all. So let's look at color photographs mm. as I make them. I enjoy looking when I I'm out making pictures for ideas that have the three prime colors in there. What are the three prime colors? They're red, yellow, and blue. Now a little bit of green came in here too, but that's fine. These are these are surfboards or or some kind of water water sport paraphernalia uh, in storage in a Costa Rican beach resort and it was raining and the wind was blowing outside and I was walking around under shelter looking for pictures to make. Uh, we were in Costa Rica for one day on a cruise and we picked the worst day of the year, I think. But these old 
surfboards, wherever they are, are kind of musty. There are leaves on them. They're in the dark, kind of. Uh, and I love the relationship of just the sheer relationship of the three primes, yellow, blue, and red. And so keep your eye out for those colors together or even apart, because what do they do? They scream for attention. They are, they convey moods. They are the purest of the pure. Even when they're faded, this boat was once yellow and blue and red, but now it's turning pink and whatever and, and white. And I found this in the Ushuaia, Argentina, which is at the bottom of the world. It's the, it's the embarkation point for Antarctica. And the ships there take a terrible beating when they're left outside in the wintertime. And Ushuaia gets very, very, very rough winters. And you can see the corrosion here. I love it. It's very, very tactile, but right. it's the it's the texture that weather leaves, and the colors that were once refined and perfect and pure are now torn by nature. This is in the. Um, uh, the British West Indies, I believe. No, no, the, the Dutch West Indies. The, the name of the country is Curacao. So what would that be? Tim? I'm not sure. I think it's Dutch, but I'm not sure. Well, it was Holland. It was Holland's. It was evening and I saw this yellow facade with the blue window and the little bird standing on the ledge below it and the evening clouds rolling in. And again, yellow is a very dramatic color, powerful color. And when you see it in mass, when you make a photograph of it in mass, it really is impressive. Here we have a landscape in the Alabama hills and near Bishop, California, you were with me this evening and the sun was setting and you could see that the, the color of rust in the trees, the, tr the leaves are virtually gone and the, the, the rust color remains and the rust, the, uh, the golden wheat like color of the, the grass. Contrast to the massive dark boulders that rise behind. Tim, you want anything to add to this? Well, the thing that's hit me is the previous images were extremely abstract. And so basically it was just the color that was speaking through the abstraction. And this is clearly not. And I also am noticing that the rocks are, while they're gray, they are a warm gray. So there is the contrast. Of, I mean, a cold gray, the blue gray. Blue gray. Yeah. With the uh, white, with the uh, yellow amber of the grasses. Uh, that, I like that. Right. So I not only enjoy working with the prime colors, but I like working with colors that are uh, 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 muted, suggested, there but not there. They they make things vital. They make things live. Mm -hmm. mm. This is the cover picture for this particular module. It's one of my favorite color images. I made it in Guilin, China. And it was a rainy day, so I wasn't outside. I don't like to get wet. Uh, it's not my sport. <laughs> And I was making pictures from the, from the warm, dry hotel room. And I looked out on a street in Guilin. And suddenly, the rain ceased and the sunset appeared on the street. It turned the street to gold. And I waited for people to come through this patch of gold. Wet gold, I would call it, because it had been raining. And when this lone cyclist came under that tree. I got him. And 
he seems to be riding into a land of promise or a year of promise or a century of promise. You can, you can put your own value on it because gold represents value and symbolizes value, symbolizes wealth, symbolizes power, symbolizes promise. You can, you can tack your own caption onto this picture, but he's alone and he's surrounded in gold. And that, to me, makes this picture very special. Tim, what do you want to add to this? Oh, it's, 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 a, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Uh, it's interesting to me that the woman in the foreground, when I first saw her, I thought she was a lamppost. <laughs> she's there, but she's not there. She's, she's in the deep shadows. Right. That's why I thought she was a lamppost. I love the light. It's just beautiful in the shadow. Light and shadow and color work together to abstract this image and to create a symbol. Right. I was mm. in Suaria, Morocco, and they call it the Blue City because their houses are trimmed in blue and many of their mosques are blue. And I found, this was amazing. The sea was blue, it was a gray day. And this guy is wearing a blue hijaba, I guess they call these robes, walking. He's kind of looking at where he's going and thinking he seems to be pleasantly absorbed in thought. And behind him is a blue bicycle. Oh. And it's, I guess, a blue white wall that has blue paint showing through. And so it, it's a symphony in blues here, and grays and whites. Yeah. Tim, any well, yeah, and, and uh, you know, beyond what you have said, for me, the peeling paint on the on the wall is almost reminiscent of a an Asian Chinese painting. It's cool. Yes. yes. You and I were in Bolivia. We were on a bus uh, bound for a location in Sucre. Uh, and it was heavy traffic. And we were kind of stalled for a while. And I looked out my window and I saw a yellow bus parked next to a Coca-Cola sign. And there were, there were the primes there. There was blue, there was yellow. There was red. And then I looked around the bus and I saw this guy coming down the street. And I knew he would come down the narrow sidewalk between the parked bus and the Coca-Cola ad. And when he just about reached the Coca-Cola ad, you can see the tension here running between him and the Coca-Cola here. Uh, I shot this picture because he was wearing red pants, a blue warm-up jacket with red striping. It was a perfect fit of colors. A prime of timing. It was good timing because I could anticipate, I could see him coming. Right. He wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> I don't know, did you shoot this guy when he came by? Pardon me? Did you photograph him? I don't believe so. You were on the bus, I can tell you that. You are going to the same place I was. Yep. Wow. You can tell you, Bolivia, there, there it is. And on the license. Wow. This is on a truck that I saw in somewhere in India. I can't tell you where. But I, 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 it just blew me away. They, they, India, people in India, make their trucks into works of art. Uh, they, they own their truck and they make it theirs by emblazoning it in colors. And these were feathers, I would guess. And you can see the, the, the struts of the trucks uh, um, the surrounding uh, metal, uh, I don't know what they're called, things that that they can strap things onto, I guess, would be the best closest that I can come. And you have them here and here, and the uh, 
down here. But the whole purpose of this picture is to astound you with color. And the primes are all here, yellow, blue, and red. And they just shout, look at me. Tim? Well, for me too, I mean, I, I agreed to all that, but it's also got a really interesting incongruity for me in the, <coughs> the clear wear and tear on the metal and the emblazed beauty that's been applied to it is a, is a real in, incongruity for me. But you notice that the part that's painted is not worn at all. Right. Or it's covered. <laughs> yeah, they keep it, they protect it. Right. Whereas the functional parts of the truck, they have no need for embellishment. Or kind of grungy now after years and years of wear and tear. And I love that contrast that you mentioned, the incongruity. When uh, we lived in um, uh, right near a mountain preserve here in Phoenix uh, for about 18, 19 years. And uh, this is my backyard. I looked out on uh, Piestawa Peak uh, right here, which is the highest mountain in, in the city of Phoenix. Uh, it used to be called Squaw Peak, uh, but that was found to be politically incorrect and the, the name officially changed to honor the, the Native American woman who was the first Native American woman to die in a US combat operation in Iraq. And uh, I would see sunsets out my back, uh, the, you know, the back of my house, and I would routinely make them, but this one was a special one. Uh, I was at work in my office and I wasn't looking, I, I, was, I didn't have a window in, in my office that looked out uh, on this panoramic area. And my late wife, Liz, shouted, Phil, come quickly, look out the back of the house. All right. I, I, and this is what I saw. Nature made this, I, I had no, I, I made the picture but nature made the scene. It is an explosive sunset. The desert climate creates dusty skies and clouds. And when you mix dust and clouds and skies at certain times of the year, this is in the monsoon season. Uh, it's a combination of storm cloud, dust cloud, but it's illuminated and translucently illuminated in, in, in red and gold and orange and just explodes. Tim, you want to add to this? Well, it's just the, <coughs> the, the drabness of the landscape is important for me in terms of the explosion of the color. Yeah, well, it's drab because it's about just, uh, you know, the sun is set. So you're looking at uh, natural forms, rock forms that are not illuminated, so it can't right. bring up their reddish color. So they are drab. And that does make an incongruous a contrast to the explosive nature of this picture. You could not make this picture work in black and white. It would be very difficult to do. Right. Ah, uh, Yosemite. This is a very familiar picture to you. I'm sure you printed it for me uh, when I turned 75, seven years ago. And I have it hanging up above me here in my office. This image was made in Yosemite National Park and it was made of Bridal Veil Falls. And it was made at the moment, and I mean the moment when color invades the scene gloriously at the base of the falls because of the mist and the angle of the sun. You have blues and greens and reds and oranges and it turns the base of the falls almost on fire. Uh -huh. And it's a very special scene. And again, the, you know, Ansel Adams made Yosemite waterfalls famous with his black and white images. And 
you can make brilliant and wonderful black and white images of waterfalls. And I have, I hope. And this one is so special because of nature's gift, the rainbow. And it doesn't take the traditional form of a rainbow, but it gives you the colors that a rainbow produces. Tim, you want to talk about this? Uh, again, it's, it, it's the color in relationship to the rest of the image in that that's why it's a image about color you know there is, there is subtle color but it's the 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 vibrance of the rainbow is beautiful and this concludes my module on color which to me the, the more i think of it the more the, the more precious it, it becomes because nature has given us the ability to discern color unless we're colorblind. And nature has provided wonderful colors that express mood and meaning. Uh, the, you know, the meaning in this photograph is conveyed through the colors. It's, nature seems to be celebrating right. in this image by throwing an array of color at the base of the waterfall. It's a celebratory image. And that's mm -hmm. That's expression. Right. And let's conclude by simply saying that regard color as an asset when you have it to work with. But don't forget that the opposite black and white imagery, a powerful abstracting tool, is equally important in expressive photography. Use right. both interchangeably. Next time we conclude with composition. Right. <laughs>